Imagine your body as a vibrant city, millions of citizens, lights on, life humming every day. Threats try to break in like viruses, bacteria, rogue cells. Most never make the news because your immune system does its job. Your city army stops them. But sometimes one threat learns to wear a fake badge and slip past the guards. This can be your cancer cells. So today I'm going to use a story form to help explain the immune system and show you why your inner army can win or lose and how we can help Help it win. I'm Dr. Dino Prado. For the last 25 years, I've worked in the area of precision oncology with my team. Immune-centric care, building cancer cell vaccines, building immune immunotherapies for our patients. And we've helped people that have failed some of the top hospitals across the country get out of guesswork and get into targeted care. So why is it that some treatment doesn't work and others do? And it has a lot to do with your immune system. And so today we're going to dive deep into immunity. So stay with me. I'm going to try to share a story with you that kind of helps tell how it works. At the gate of your streets are the guards, your skin and your mucosa. These are the city walls. These are the moats that keep the invaders out. These are so important. They're like the innate patrol. Then we have these neutrophils first on the scene. These are like the sirens, short-lived, big splash, but they're really important for the immune system. Macrophages. These are the street cops that clean up crews and they also can, they eat, report, and rebuild. That's their function. And then there's the dendritic cells. These are the detectives. They collect all the mug shots the information of all the invaders, the antigens, and they pass these on to the generals of the immune system. And here's your natural killer cells. These are the special cops and the generals. They get the information and they can hunt down the cancer cells, kill them, hunt down the viruses and go after them. Especially useful when cells hide their ID badges and they're trying to hide. When these cancer cells are hiding, they can find them. Then we have an adaptive control or commanders, the T cells. These are the battle planners. They coordinate for everyone. So you take the next group called the cytotoxic T cells. They're the CD8. These are the snipers. They recognize specific targets and they can take them out. This is critical for cancer again. And then we have the B cells. These are the antibodies, the wanted posters that you stick out so that you can see all the enemies and everybody knows where they are. So you build memory and you know how to make sure that these invaders don't come back. This is the key. So first we have the innate, fast but fuzzy. Then we have the adaptive, slow but laser precision. And together we have a balanced and memory immune system. So this is kind of gives you an overview of the key players. Most days, your guards catch the rogue citizens. The cells that have DNA errors that we can delete and quietly remove from the body, that's what a healthy, normal immune system does over 10,000 times a day. But cancer happens when these cells learn three dirty tricks. Grow without rules. So this is like a gas pedal that gets stuck. Ignore the stop sign so there's no breaks. Wear a fake ID badge and hide themselves from the guards. And so these things can happen when we have problems with like chronic infections in our bodies, chemicals, heavy metals, and toxins. That's why root cause analysis is so important because these factors can cause these things to happen. These are part of the key factors here that can cause the mutational changes that we see in the body. The city doesn't see the threats clearly. The rogue builds safe houses. They hire bodyguards. These are stromal cells to create barriers and walls. And it jams the radio signals, the immune checkpoints. So now we have evasion tactics and things like infections, toxins, and heavy metals can cause a lot of these problems. Why did these guards miss it? Well, because the enemy created fog in the battlefield. So you can't see it like chronic infections, viruses, bacteria, fungal, even things that cause inflammation that goes rogue weakens the body's immune system. It can drain the army of our T cells and exhaust them. And so this is what you'll see oftentimes when people take PD-1 inhibitors, it only works for a short period of time stops working is because their T cells get exhausted. They weren't really balancing the immune system in the way they needed. They didn't change the spatial biology around the immune neighborhood. Some viruses can change the street signs on the cells, making the ID badges harder to find. Inflammatory smog confuses friend and foe. Chemical toxins, pesticides, solvents, endocrine disruptors can tilt the city into a chronic low-grade inflammation, creating way too much noise and less targeting. Over time, the signals like a attack here or stand down, they get scrambled. And so it throws the body off. Heavy metals like mercury, lead, cadmium, they can impair antigen presenting, the detective work. They can shift the balance towards Tregs, these T regulatory cells, peacekeepers, and MDSCs, crowd control cells that over suppress the action of the immune system. Harmful when we're trying to kill cancer because they block the natural killer cells ability to fight and kill the cancer. So this is so important. And so here's the bottom line. Evasion is an only 
about tumor cleverness. It's also about the terrain, the streets, the fogginess, the radio signals that get jammed, even brave guards that can't coordinate. So cancer immunity is so important. Think of it in an eight-step loop. Your army must complete. The tumor breaks, the antigen spills. So the dendritic cells collect the mug shots. The dendritic cells brief the T cells in the lymph nodes what to do. The T cells will expand, build the army, and the army marches against the tumor. The army enters the tumor, and the army recognizes the exact bad guys, the cancer cells, and then the army eliminates them from the body. This is key. But if we have a poor mug shock, weak antigens, or antigens that have changed on us, not enough troops, we have too low T cells or exhausted T cells, blocked doors like stromal barriers that make it hard for these natural killer cells to get to the tumors and, and poor blood flow, we have jammed radio signals and drugs like PD-1 inhibitors don't work, other immunotherapies don't work, they get blocked, they get exhausted soldiers, chronic stimulation, infection, toxins leading to this. If we don't repair the broken steps, we don't get durable control. So this is why immune-centric care is so important because it focuses on this. When we talk about spatial biology and immune profiling, and we're looking at transcriptomics, RNA, and DNA, this is the focus of what we're looking at. The goal is not just to shrink the cancer. It's a durable response so that the immune system and the army can go to work and get rid of the cancer through deep mapping and better identity because your immune system is your God-given ability to fight cancer. And if we restore it correctly, we're always going to get better responses. That's why deep mapping is so important. We understand the neighborhoods. We can see all the gangs that are around the cancer cells, the tumors, blocking your police immune system from doing their work. We find the targets for chemo, the targeted agents that actually stimulate your immune system, not harm it, the right plants and phytotherapeutics that stimulate the immune system to find the cancer. And then these immuno strategies are combined in an N of one custom build for each patient. This is important. Oftentimes we have to go direct to tumor because we want to get into the tumor, shut the blood supply, kill it, and release these new antigens, neoantigens to the dendritic cells so that our natural killer cells will have that information and now be able to finally identify the cancer and remove it. We want to release damps, these damage associated molecular patterns. These are danger sirens. These stimulate the immune system to sniff out on many levels the cancer and kill it so that we block immune evasion and we push immune education. So the more we kill the cancer, it releases these this tumor information, the damps, and this goes to the dendritic cells, it goes to natural killer cells, and now we have this virtuous cycle of kill, proper information being taught to your body's immune system, and continual removal of the cancer. This is turning on the body's natural way that it fights cancer through our natural killer cells, dendritic cells, and immune-centric strategies to care. So this is the key, and this is why it's so important that our T cells, the real army, they are the key to cancer treatment and should be the focus in the full course of care. Instead of a blanket that we just try to throw on the cancer, give chemo, hope the immune system works, try this, try that. We need targeted planning so we can go after the cancer with detailed approaches that let your immune system do the work. And here's that why this is so important. Because the immune system doesn't just shrink the cancer. It teaches the body what to do and it creates memory in the body so that the cancer can stay away. These T cells have the right energy and the right targets. That's what they do every day. That's what they're designed to do. That's why when people have better immunity, overall, they do better. They respond better to every single treatment there is. But when people have weakened immunity, they don't. And then you have the problem of chemotherapy. When you give it in very high doses, you can get too many T regulatory cells or the myeloid derived suppressor cells that block your T cells from doing their work completely because it's too much of a response. It's not targeted. It's not elegant. It's not custom built. And all of this can be monitored in the full treatment of care when we look at circulating tumor cells, CT free DNA, methylation scores. We can see that the cancer is going into remission and the immune system is doing its work. So here's the bottom line. You need a design that works on an immune centric plan. Train the immune system and build the immune system to fight the cancer so that the cancer can go away and your immune system can win. This is the key. So it's not just about taking a checkpoint inhibitor or taking some special drug, but it's about this full concert of your immune system. What makes it stronger? What helps it recognize the cancer? How can we put the cancer in remission? How can we restrengthen the body's health? How can we remove the causative agents, chemical toxins, infections, heavy metals, all these things that have weakened the immune system so we can restore the body's normal, natural, healthy function that God gave us. I hope this was helpful and you started to see the importance of how we can turn a cold tumor that's not responding to your immune system hot by helping it recognize the immune system because of this immune-centric approach. May the Lord bless you on your journey to healing.